Hello and welcome to day number one of, or no, game number one of day number six, there we go, of Starlight Season 5 Star Series. It is going to be Lion's Pride taking on Freedom of the Action or FODA. And uh, we're going to see one game between these two teams. We're going to see four games in total today. After this match we'll see TCM taking on Virtus Pro. After that we'll have No Tide Hunter taking on Fnatic with 3D Max vs Empire to close the day for Starlighter Day 6. So let's see what we're going to have first with these two teams. Lions Pride, they have got a Magnus picked up. Thinking about the next pickup, we have a Keeper of Life for Foda as their Batrider, Nyx Assassin, Wisp and Darkseer were banned out and now Queen of Pain. So that's already an off lane and a solo mid lane picked up for Lion's Pride and two very solid ones at that. And already two, two heroes that fit into very, or into quite a lot of different, uh, different lineups. So Queen of Pain can of course be going for that mid game aggression, but we have seen Queen of Pains that is also um, just going for that uh, for that late game, perhaps. Ten Who knows? There's gonna be a Bane picked up by Foda, so they have that one together with the Garrocopter. So that's already a strong combination that we've seen before as well, with the Nightmare set up for a Rocket Barrage. And if you combine that with a Garrocopter, oh, sorry, with a Keeper of Light, you got yourself an aggressive tri lane. Could be a very uh, defensive, or could be a defensive tri lane where they want to try to kill off Magnus, perhaps. But aggressive tri lane so far for Foda. They do make it fairly easy for Lion Sprite to ban out heroes, though. Though I mean, considering Lion Sprite already got two of their their solo laners, seconds, they don't really need their own solo la laners anymore. So they can just ban out those solo lanes and make sure that Foda is gonna have a bit of a tough time at getting an, a solid off lane and a solid mid lane to deal with the lineup that Lion Sprite has. Now the question for Lion Sprite: Are they gonna pick up their carry, or or different carry, or are they gonna pick up a support? Like either way. If you pick up a support, you at least give Foda a bit um, more heroes to ban out. So you would ban out and carries and supports and jungle heroes perhaps as well, depending on what you'll be expecting it. But if you pick up a Luna, for example, there we go. It is um, it is very easy for Foda to ban out those supports that they don't want to face, like the um, I like the uh, Shadow Demon, perhaps also like the Rubik. And of course, you also have the potential of jungle heroes. I mean, Luna with an Enigma is a great combination with those Eidolons and that Lunar Blessing. It's gonna actually be the Silencer, a hero that we have seen being played as a support, but still, still interesting to see. Uh, we have a Phantom Lancer being picked up by or banned out by Lion's Pride. I mean, the potential for a dual lane could still be there if you really want to make sure that you're not gonna have a dual lane Keeper of the Light, Phantom Lancer, and that dual lane Garrocopter Bane. And then you better ban him out. So good. Uh, good choice regardless with the clockwork being banned out as well hero that we have seen playing the offlane lately and there still is the rubik for foda so no real surprise about the bands maybe apart from the silencer but then again we've seen him as support and having a big impact on the game as well lion's pride thinking about their last ban i mean yeah is it which, which solo lane do you not want to have up against the queen of pain is the question and if you're comfortable with anything well then just ban out a Windrunner or something uh, something like that. Windrunner of course a solid solo lane. Of course we have seen also a lot of um a lot of Ten aggressive trail mm -hmm. lanes uh, that had a safe lane farmer like either a life stealer or a killing or remaining. you know, a, kind of a carry hero. Reserve time. They're taking into the reserve time for this one even. Not really sure about which one they would ban out. Maybe also taking the time a bit to decide about what they want to play later on. I mean, freedom of the action is going to have this time also to think about what they want to pick up. So I don't expect them to need that much time. Unless, unless Lion's Pride is indeed going to ban out that hero that they really wanted to have for themselves. Uh, we do have a Windrunner being banned out. As I said, that's the solid one to ban if you don't know exactly what you're going to do well or what the opponent needs. Windrunner is always good if they still need a solo lane. Oh, and Beastmaster would be another example for that. But then again, Foda, they might be picking up that Beastmaster. Though, I have to say, I mean, if you're expecting them to still pick up a mid lane hero, maybe they want to go for something like an Invoker or something like a Tinker Ten even. To so go into the mid lane, if you pick up a Tinker, then you also have... 
uh, of course, a lot of mid-game presence with that uh, March of the Machines, making sure that your opponents cannot push. And if you have a Luna on the other side, Reserve making time. sure that they can't push might be uh, worth quite a bit with that Lunar Blessing just being basically stopped right there. But they are taking their time. And this is interesting, because as I said, I mean, they just had time to think about what they wanted to pick up. They just had tons of time, even. With Lion's Pride lo using a lot of their bonus time to ban out that Wind Runner. But Foda, they need apparently more time than that. Maybe still wanted to pick up that Wind Runner. <clears throat> now being denied it, it's gonna be the Puck. A Puck Queen of Pain lanes, we've seen those before. A very decent lane, which in, uh, in theory, no, nobody should die. It's, uh, it's gonna come down to, to skill mostly. It's gonna be Enchantress that gets picked up Rain by Lion Sprite, so they wanna go for a dual lane and then have a jungle hero. So it's gonna be a safe lane for the Luna with an off lane Magnus indeed and the Queen of Pain in the solo mid. So they only need a support and they don't have to be afraid that Foda is gonna be picking up that support because they already have two. Although I guess in theory, uh, Keeper of Light, we've seen him in the off lane before, but that's not gonna be the case this time. Unfortunately. <clears throat> Ten seconds remaining. There's still a full minute into Foda's Five bonus time, so remaining. no rush for them to pick up the last hero. Is it going to be one of those carries that's going to be safe farming like Reserve a Clinks? Time. I mean, he's going to be up against a solo Magnus, you now know that. So you, you now know what you are up against, so you can pick up a, pick up a hero accordingly. Maybe even a Lifesteader would be able to do that. But then again, it depends on what you, <clears throat> what you want to do with your trial lane. I mean, if you're assuming your trial lane is going to work, which in th yeah, which you sh probably should. And then you um, aggressive trailer that is. Then you want to have a hero that's gonna be a lot. Well, it's gonna be taking a bit of time to farm up, and that's gonna be a lone druid. And they're gonna assume that he has the time that he needs to farm up. Though of course that will be different if uh, if the aggressive trailer does not work out for Foda and then that lone druid. It's gonna have a bit less time, depending on how Lion's Pride is gonna uh, gonna deal with it, of course. Uh, they have a lot of mid-game aggression as well, but they need those levels first. They need Magnus at level 6, remaining. they need Queen of Pain at level 8-ish or something. Depending on also how Venomancer. Queen of Pain versus Puck does. And there is a Venomancer picked up for Lion's Pride. I mean, that that is something that I wasn't really expecting, mostly because if you're gonna be up against an aggressive trial lane, you wanna have something that will be able to stop your opponent from going in. Like, okay, there will be a Nightmare, and then Gyrocopter will come out with a Rocket Barrage, Illuminate will fly out and hit regardless, etc. But if then all you can do is, uh, is like, a, a Lucent Beam and a Gale, that's, that's basically not really your escape right there. And that would still be a kill for your opposing team. So I'm kind of curious to see how that's going to be working out for El Pride. I mean, in theory, we could have a Luna <coughs> Venomancer in the mid lane, Queen of Pain on the solo lane top, and Lolic on the solo lane off lane, but... I'm not expecting uh, that to happen, but let's see what, what actually is going to happen. We do have Sock playing the Luna, he's going to go towards the top lane. There's going to be Massacre on this Queen of Pain, he'll be going to the mid lane, no real surprise there. Hakon though, he picked up a Ven the Venomancer and he's going to be warding and probably then rotating towards the top lane as Android. <clears throat> not quite sure what his intent is, he could be trying to help out uh, the Magnus a bit on his uh, bottom lane. <coughs> wow. <clears throat> and maybe get a successful first blood. That's of course something a Gale is a very <clears throat> handy tool to get that first button, especially if they're expecting that Lone Drew to be there by himself. That will be a big kill if they get it. And we'll be putting Lolik in, uh, in favor there. And of course Lolik, in case you're wondering why do you recognize that name, is because he used to be in that 3D clan. He, uh, yesterday he got replaced officially by a server in 3D clan and now he's playing as a stand-in for El Pride, who of course lost Vegas last week and have been playing with the solo stand-in A-dash since and uh, apparently are now having a lot of stand and maybe trying him out, we'll, we'll know probably soon enough if uh, El Pride, uh, when El Pride makes the decision about which player they're gonna have instead of Vigas, big shoes to fill. We're gonna have on the side of Foda, on the side of the Radiant, it's gonna be Zara playing the Lone Druid. It will be Stelz who's gonna be playing the puck in the mid lane up against that Queen of Pain for Massacre. It will be Die on the Keeper of the Light, rotating towards the bottom lane as... Um, Hakon as well as Android finding them themselves the bear and the bear he's not going to be able to uh, to, to pick up um, a creep wave anymore even if he was trying to he wasn't really just blocking the creep camp since he knows that Enchantress is there he just wants to make sure that she can't really find an easy creep there 
Uh, there is a ward here, by the way, for the Radiant side, so he does know that he has to be careful and that these two are farming by themselves. We have in the meantime, um... Oh, I got... Someone told me how to pronounce this la last time, but I forgot it. If I can't have you, no one will. Let's see first that this is gonna go. This is just harassment. The gale actually hit, but the tower is still there. And they can't do it. They can't get it for, for now, and, and that's why Dai rotated. They realized that there would not be free farm for this lone druid. Not yet, anyway. We're gonna have a uh, last one. I prepared for Rettle. It's gonna be playing the Gyrocopter, so that was the last one I didn't introduce just yet. And it's, um... Mappa. Someone in the chat, please tell me how to pronounce that. Please. It's gonna be playing the Bane. Oh, we should look at that. It's an escape history somewhere. Okay, it looks like Sarah for now is gonna be okay, especially since uh, since Hakon is uh, out of mana or at least doesn't have mana enough for Gil and doesn't have a uh, clarity because all the clarities are in a chapters and actually Hakon did donate some clarities to uh, to his enchantress just so she can get some more farm in that jungle so sacrificing his own farm for that he does have a Gil now however but he has to use it wisely I mean if you use your Gil now and not get a kill then then basically you have your entire mana pool depleted for nothing. For just harassment. And harassment on the, on the bottom lane for if you're on the hard lane is only worth it if you're actually going to be able to harass enough for them to back off all the way. But for now, I mean, he's getting experience. He's having a good time. In the meantime, it's stock that's soloing this top lane. I'm quite surprised to see him actually being able to do that. He's got only one last hit now on level 2, so I guess, in a way, he's not really able to do that. Especially not since uh, Prepare for Bellows got 12 to 7, so it's doing a, a good job there. Sentry Ward being placed. Making sure that they are alone in the jungle and, I mean, alone also with uh, with help of the creeps. And they actually ca blocked this camp by themselves. Bear scouting out a bit here as they prepare for battle. I mean, he's got a homing missile, he's got a rocket barrage. All they need is the right right uh, option to or set up. The right timing to set up. Queen of Pain double damage soon, gonna be going back to the middle lane. She's on 7 to 8 for now, while Selves is on 5 for 4. So using this time that Queen of Pain is away from the lane to get some extra extra right clicks for him. Extra last hits. As the jungle squad continues. I mean, this is not something that we normally see, and it is two people jungling, so it's not as effective as having just one. Let's see, wait a second. Oh, getting the puck, that's brave. That is very brave. He has, of course... Got that face shift that he didn't choose for the kill. Still got killed. Are they gonna jump? This massacre is with the double damage from the screens. But get silenced. Now running out of tower raises. Hakon comes in to take the tower hits. There goes another face shift. More right clicks to come. And this should be the death of him. Especially with the double damage from. There we go. First blood massacre pulls it out. As Android will still be going down. Because his nature's attendants do not heal him enough. And he was too greedy with that tower. And that was an enchanter skill by the Radiant, because there was no no hit for uh, for Puck down on him, so he gets no experience and no goals. It's not that bad. In the meantime, the setup for Stark was there on the top lane, the Nightmare, followed by the Rock of Barrage and the Brain Staff. It's all that's really needed to take down a Luna this early in the game, especially if she's by herself. So no real surprise that that kill also happened. Yes, it is. Uh, well, we can consider it one for one, I guess, then. Well, yeah. Still, Enchanter's lost some gold, of course, with that, uh, with that death, but... Oh well, she's gonna go back to farming, this time in her own jungle, together with Steel Hakon there. So they're gonna leave the bottom lane entirely uh, by themselves. It's gonna be Magnus who's level 5 already. And uh, Zara actually a level behind in that sense. He's 12 for 3 for now, as we have got Lolik on 19 for 10. So he is doing really well for himself, and he's actually highest up on last hits for everybody. And I have to say, nobody's really farming like insane amounts here in this game, but... Uh, having the solo offlane farming most attack. is something that we don't see every day. There's gonna be a smoke off rail pride. Let's see if they can get something going here on Zara this time. And another gill, of course, in the pocket. They have, got, of course, also got a slow. And they've got a Nursa. And let's see what they get. There's a slow. Gale hits, Scooter also clears out the trees, Illuminate will still fly through, but it doesn't matter. Zara will drop in meantime Android, this time winning the battle versus the tower. Nature Sentinels now level 2. Here comes a Nightmare Brain Sap actually to get the kill. Hakon at least gonna be taken in return for that one. But the TP scroll was used, so getting something back for that. More TP scrolls. Well, that's actually just Lone Druid coming back. Massacre. Invincibility rune, but look at this. 
They realize he's there. They saw him. The blink was there. And he's still gonna go for it though. Massacre going for die. Illuminate's gonna still charge through, but it doesn't matter. Die will die. Yes, that is his name. <laughs> Radiant structures are fortified. Yeah. Radiant's bottom tower. That makes for some attack. very bad puns, I believe. <clears throat> but that's gonna be Magnus being level six, so his uh, reverse polarity is there. He's got himself some mana boots. He's doing really well for himself. In the meantime, I mean, prepare for battle. Attack. This wasn't really an aggressive try lane. They did get a kill, of course. They shut down that Luna once. But for now, I mean, he's level 5 still. He had to share the experience with the Bane for a while. As Sog, also level 5, so not shut down that much. He's 12 for 2. 13 for 2 right now with uh, with the Gyrocopter 28 for 10. So the farm is definitely going in favor of the Gyrocopter. But still, Sog not really being shut down all that much. And he can still just continue to be there while, for now, Gyrocopter is by himself. So... Having a bit of a, uh, a harder time, one would say, as we do also have Hakon moving towards the top lane. Prepare for battle. It's gonna be uh, fa b being found, though. Oh, there we go. They see the Gale hits. Is there gonna be more? They need to have that Luna. She is, of course, the fastest, fastest hero in the game, but not fast enough to reach up there. We saw her moving down for a moment when she th still thought she might have been able to get that. Sentry word also being placed, just in case. As we have got Venomancer's Illusion just awarding. Awarding the uh, ancient camp and a nice crossroads at that. Massacre being level 7 right now. Picked up his Sonic Wave, so might be going for a uh, kill soon, hopefully. He's already got two on the board, I have to say. He's not doing bad for himself at all. No assist, yo, though, but uh, that's okay. He's gone at 2 for 0. In the meantime, it's Stealth that only died once. 22 for 11 for him, while Massacre is at 30 for 12. So, overall, Queen of Pain just winning this lane. And that's also why we see Die coming into the middle lane, helping out. As uh, they force Massacre away. In the meantime, Entangle, Lolik, gonna try to TP himself up, but here comes the Nightmare, and this should be a death. Brainstaff to finish it off. And that's what you get if you get an Entangle. The bear's still very low, though. And the reverse polarity not able to be used, because he was out of mana. Another kill going the way of Foda. This guy to pick himself up some face boots, a standard item for him as we have stock. I mean, I'm kind of curious to see if he's going to go for Hand of Midas or not. Invisibility. Nope, he's going to go for Ring of Aquila. Invisibility picked up by the Bane, let's see. He can set up some nice stuff. I mean, we did see him on the top lane for a while and he was um, taking a lot of experience from the Gyrocopter, if I may say so. And he is level 6, so he has got a Fiend script, so we're probably going to see him trying to look for Massacre. But Massacre, he is on the way to base. He is going to be playing it safe. They probably know that by now that Bane is level 6, so don't really want to be overextending there. Especially not when you don't know what the rune bottom was. You do know that there was a rune, because you have, of course, got that top ward scouting out the top rune. So you know there is a rune, and you know that's probably going to be taken, or at least you have to assume it. And that's going to be Bane with an Invis rune. Always prepare for the worst, and I do think Bane Invis rune, eh, probably one of the worst things to have. Lolik back towards the bottom lane right now, as we still have the Venomancer as well as Enchantress farming in the jungle. They are level 4. They're okay-ish, I guess, if we put on that worth that shows it a bit more clear. We do have Haikon abs having absolutely nothing, I would say, with Android taking the farm. We do have three supports, of course, semi-supports. Well, I, that's... okay, that couldn't really count, uh count the puck because he's got things flying into him but we have got two supports of Foda also not being that high I have to say though the, um, the Luna and the puck being at the same level is something that's probably better for El Pride than for Foda As the smoke is on for Hakon and Android and they're gonna find the Bane Gale is gonna hit gets himself put inside a web there's a nightmare being taken over by the dark troll fiends grip up on Hakon but Sonic Wave will clean him out. It is gonna be a rock of rise that cleans out Android and Hakon goes down and tangle up on him as well. Massacre can blink himself out and will do just that as he blinks himself into the Gyrocopter for a screen and for a kill. Now they do have a reverse polarity. This would be worth using it. Um, but you have to actually get there to use it. Illuminate, ooh, almost hitting. There's a silence up on Lolik though. He cannot use his mass his Oh, reverse polarity, but the shockwave still cleans out. Die, can he? Ah, he will die. I'm kind of surprised he didn't use his reverse polarity in that fight. I mean, it was a big team fight. Almost everybody came to participate in that fight. Like everybody, apart from maybe Stalk. And there was a fight that in in, in favor of Foda, I would say El Pride still getting some kills on the back of that, but. 
El Pride were the ones that were aggressive. El Pride were the ones to uh, to die in the end. And giving the lone druid a bit of more experience there. That's and gold at that. You don't really want to do that. You had an okay time shutting him down on the bottom lane, and now you're having. Well, you're having him getting experience of kills that he probably should not have. Massacre picking up a uh, overclub. Probably gonna go for BKB as first item. With Android still having nothing more. I'm kind of curious to see if Enchantress is going to go for a semi-carry build in this game. Or if Android just wants to go for a, a bit of a supporty build. I mean, Hakon is not really going to get the farm in this game for to get something like a mechanism or something like that. So I think it should be Android. Unless it's going to be the Magnus that's going to be doing that. And he already has a headdress, so that might be the case. So we might be seeing a semi-carry Android right here. As uh, the real carry is still happily farming on the top lane. Smoke up now, Bane, with another fiend's grip, fiend's grip up his sleeve. Lolik trying to stack some Ancients, of course that's a great Dyer's thing to do if you have yourself a Luna attack. on the team. She can take down those Ancients quite fast. 1200 gold up on the lone druid. No hand of Midas is on anybody, is there? Quite interesting to see. Both teams wanna, well, not make it into late game or wanna Finish it early game? Even the Luna not having a, a hand of Midas is, is something that I wasn't expecting her to uh, to not get. Too bad. And why uh, while we watch Puck, I'm just gonna take a drink. Ooh, wait a second. Things going out of for the battle. There's gonna be Enchantress standing around. They're gonna go for a push. And if uh, if that's not working, they might be going for a kill, because on the sidelines, Massacre coming in as well. For the battle, he knows that some or for battle, prepare for battle. He knows that something's wrong, and he's gonna get help from his teammates. There is a bane now as well as a keeper of the light. Illuminates will help out. Reach the creep wave still, and it's gonna be El Pride that backs off for now. Bane looking for Feast Grip, gets it on the Luna. Where is he in Nothing can interrupt it. Well, you can kill him and then interrupt it, but the Illuminate still cleans out stock as well as Enchantress by the Pux Orb. And that's gonna be two for one. And that, I mean, come to think of it, the only thing that really can stop that uh, that fiend script is either the Luna with a loosened beam, and she got put in an ensnare of her, in a fiend script, of course, so she couldn't, or the reverse polarity. That's it. Unless Enchantress steals herself some nice creeps that can actually do that, but it's not that much. So he picked up the right one, illuminated to clean it out to help out with Puck coming in from the side to uh, to get the two kills and he desperately needed that because Puck wasn't really doing all too well. <laughs> but now with two kills he's get himself a bit Radiant close to that blink dagger. And yes, I'm still trying to get the drink. And he is um, he is doing pretty nicely right now, or at least starting to. He's almost level 11, almost a level 2 dream coil. As, um, the tower also still alive on the top lane. No towers down yet in the entire game. We still have yet to see reverse polarity. Mechanism almost done. Only 500 more gold to go on the uh, Lolic. And then he has that one complete. We can almost buy the Minster Hammer up on the min up on Massacre. I mean, BKB is going to be really needed. You're, you don't want to get silenced. You don't want to get shut down. Of course, the only thing that will still hurt him quite a bit <laughs> is the Fiend script. We have seen Banes more and more lately as it's been um, more and more well known that his Fiend script is just really annoying. It has a pretty short cooldown as well. In the meantime, Lolik and Hakon like waiting for the 14 minute rune, can't get it. It's top android, nice. haste rune. Let's see what they're gonna be able to do with that. They probably still wanna try to take the tower. Well, that carry is still farming. I mean, you, you don't really wanna go up and against the farm lone druid later on in the game, who's actually got a mint, a millstorm ready right now, so... This is a lone druid that can be participating in fights already. And they will be taking down the tower, no deny. It is Massacre that picks up the gold for that one, and that's four heroes used for that. As in the meantime, on the top lane, it's Stalk that gets picked off. A lot of Fiend's Grip being used for that one, no hope for him then. It's just, uh, it's just too much. And with no wards, um, like on the lane or something like that. He was just surprised by that, and as a Bane, you can just walk up to him, and if you, if, if you get it, I mean, he, he just can't run away. It's even daytime, but even then. 
gonna be even more dangerous if uh, if we see Bane picking up a blink dagger or a force staff or something like that. The BKB, I'm not sure we're gonna see because reverse polarity, the other the other thing apart from the lucent beam that goes um, that that stops the king's grip, is still gonna go through BKB, and then there's only the lucent beam that can interrupt you. So you might as well just focus on stock every single time, just to make sure he doesn't interrupt you. And it's a good one to have also because Luna is, is one of those heroes that, I mean, she hits like a truck when she's fast, I mean, she's farmed. She does. The only problem is with, with her is that she's normally pretty squishy, so as long as she can't attack, you can kill her off fast enough. And she's gonna be of uh, no problem, no one, no issue for the team. The Luminae's still doing a lot of damage, but the tower went down and that's, only a, that's all that Elpride wants to have. We do have the gold graph going towards uh, L Pride. I mean, this is with the towers, two towers down on the side of Oda. And even with that tower gold, I mean, you you would expect about 3k gold in favor of uh, L Pride. With that, maybe a bit less considering the three kills difference. But it's still not really that much gold difference. Experience difference will be in favor of Oda, though. I mean, the last couple of kills all went towards them. And later kills give more experience. And let's see if Oda, them, if Oda themselves can pick up some, uh, some tower gold for... On the top lane. I'm gonna... Oh. If he would make a mistake with that. Oi. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Yeah, that's oi. Well, we haven't really seen a proper one, so I guess, you know, you might as well just waste it. Since you're not gonna use it anyway. I'm not sure what he's doing right there. Dyer's there bottom go. tower is under attack. But uh, but Elp, right? They've taken down all tier one towers, bar the tier one bottom. But that's of course also the one where lone druids at. So you you know that you're gonna fight four on five. If you're gonna be or four on four, I should say. If you're gonna be on the top and uh, and uh, middle lane, but you are gonna have to fight four on five if you're gonna be on the bottom lane because then lone druid of your opponent team will be there as well. And you don't want to have that. So I'm not sure if they're still gonna go towards the top lane or if they're just gonna gonna try to do something else but they have to try to do something else here with the empower upon Luna that might be exactly what they're up to and they do have five heroes into this mid lane soon as Massacre is also coming in so let's see what they can do if forcing out a team fight perhaps will be the the way to go I mean they have that advantage the reverse polarity is their thing maybe it's gonna be Roshan that's gonna be their thing Let's see what they can find. Oh, they already find the Bane. There's the web. Blink forward, Jail, and that's gonna be Nightmare up on the Bane himself, but it doesn't matter. He will drop. Screw only hits on Die. Gonna be calling for prepare for battle. Will there be reverse polarity? Yes, there will be. Only hits on one, though. Here comes Cells, and it is Lolic that already drops. Sonic Wave gets dodged by the puck. It is still prepared for battle that goes down, but here also comes the lone druid, the one that could join fights fairly early because of that maelstrom. Can he get something done? Hakon, you run for your life and you will do just that. Elpride on the way out, lost their Magnus, but got a Garrocopter in the return. I mean, getting the Bane, yeah, nice. But getting a Garrocopter in return is actually pretty worth it, even though I have to say Magnus there, I mean, was a bit of a forced out reverse polarity. They went in blind, they did not have any wards up the high ground. And they um, they only find the found the keeper of the light and the bane to begin with. And finding the keeper of the light actually was the only reason why they were able to take the Garrocops to begin with. Because he got recalled by his teammate. It's like, okay, thank you for that, but no thank you. Next time we're gonna probably see him being a bit more back when he actually gets someone recalled there. In the meantime, of course, Elpride they've just used uh, their ulti, so they're gonna be uh, farming again. Until their ulties are back up again. Maybe then we're gonna try to see them going for more. Maybe even some uh, some towers. Are they gonna defend their tier 1 uh, middle? I'm curious about because there's five heroes here. Foda. Ready to uh, to fight. L like I said, that lone druid. That bear. With the maelstrom. They don't need to wait until he has a radiance. They can just go for him right now. And they will. One well, missile gonna go for massacre. Just uh, harassment. Unless he's out of position with for that. But for now he's gonna be just fine. So they're gonna be able to uh, to deny that one or to kill it off. Illuminates will fly through, just pushing the wave out. Knowing that the reverse polarity and the eclipse are on cooldown, they can't just do that. So that's with them being um, being confident that they don't 
that they aren't gonna get surprised by that big old reverse polarity. There was a tier 1 tower going down. Towers are now even. The gold graph though not that even. It's gonna be upright. That's still in favor of the gold for now. As we have the net worth and we see that Massacre is uh, the big result of that, or the big reason for that even. She's gonna sell for herself a BKB. Gonna go for Roshan? Yep, by the looks of it. And there's no ward up by the Radiance anymore, so they don't know that this is happening. Well, let's see. We have Agnims indeed for the Enchantress Android. Going for that semi carry build. I, I like this build. It makes Enchantress a bit more um, more aggressive, and you know, we like aggressive Dota, right? Bear gonna scout out that there is indeed Roshan being done. Uh, Elf Pride, they know also that they've been scouted out, but they're gonna continue for Roshan anyway. Picking up the ages and ready for this team fight. Cooldown coming down. It's gonna be Zero that's just standing there. Eclipse being used. Sonic Wave as well, and it's gonna be Bane and Lolik that drop first. Whoa, Lolik buys back though, wants to still use his reverse polarity. He's gonna be back there shortly. Prepare for battle, it's gonna be very low from that Poison Nova from Hakon, but it's not gonna go down. And with the buyback from the Magnus, they actually were able to force back Foda, who don't get anything more than just that kill upon Lolik. So it was a one for one trade, but El Pride. I was gonna say successfully defending their Aegis, but then again, Stock did lose his Aegis and got back up again. They still got the gold for the Roshan though, so that is at least something. But again, at no reverse polarity that was worth mentioning at the, at the end, as in, well, this one wasn't there at all. The previous one was a bit mesh. But, um, yeah. What can you do? What can you do? You can buy back and hope that you're back in time, which he wasn't. I mean, I'm buying back Magnus, then you know exactly what time it is, and then you back off. If you're clever. Which they are. BKB being built up, I prepare for battle. We have got the mechanism already up on the Keeper of the Light. Uh, the Blink Dagger that we already saw is going to be uh, accompanied by a Sheepstick, probably, for Stealth as a Massacre. 2k gold upon him. He's going to be surprised by 5 heroes soon, so he's probably going to have to run very fast, even though he doesn't know he does feel something's wrong with the spider senses. And he uh, gets himself out. There are indeed 5 heroes here. Half of them are smoked up. Or more than half. Actually, 80% smoked up. <laughs> with the only one not smoked up is still, so the rest is going to be uh, there. If they want to go for that. The TP comes in also for Lolik, so let's see if he can do something. Illusion. There are there are four heroes here for uh, Alpride, or round here, I should say. They they missed their uh, they missed their Venomancer though. But having said that, I mean, their Poison Nova is on cooldown anyway. The Venomancer is gonna try to do what he can to push down top slightly. Perhaps Illuminate gonna fly through just a Raspin, and cleaning out the Wave, of course, so that the Bear can attack that tower. And the smoke has ended, so this is not gonna be a gank anymore. By the way. This is just a full-on fight if they d decide to take this, but no blink dagger up on Lolik. And if he now runs in towards uh, towards his enemy team, well, then they know exactly what's coming, so they will be able to uh, to stop the reverse polarity from having a good one. We do have a deniable tower, so that's something that's good for El Pride, because no deny it being done to them just yet. In the meantime, also the Venomancer by himself was able to push here slightly. Is going to be pushed out again by, of course, the lone druid, but. Still pretty nice of him that he is able to do that just by himself, just with those wards, of course, helping out. And he's gonna be going back to safety. He's, uh, he's got 300 gold, he's got boots and a bracer, not really all too far, but then again, he's a support Venomancer, and he still has more than his support Bane counterpart. The um, the support Keeper of Light, though, is, is doing pretty well for himself. He's been in 6 out of the 12 kills, and of course, he is a Keeper of the Light. He's got himself 60 last hits, which is, pr which is pretty decent for a support. I mean, especially if you compare it to 9 of the Bane and 17 of the Venomancer. And that's, of course, because of his Illuminate. Let's not, uh... Let's not forget about that. I mean, we have to think about the credit that we give to a hero if we base it on abilities, if that makes sense. It didn't sound in my head like it makes sense. Or in my head it sounded better. Oh well. Details. TP incoming. Puck gonna be defending the bottom lane. Let's see if El Pride can take a tier 1 tower or if they're gonna back Dyer's off. They hear the TPs. So they're kind of thinking, you know what? Do we really want to do this? Lone Druid is gonna be taken down to tier 1 regardless here. Hakon's gonna try to do what he can. This bear though, if he gets an entangle, that's gonna be a kill. Gale's gonna try to help out, should be enough to make sure that Hakon is gonna be safe in the meantime on the bottom lane. Can, can El Pride take this? Illuminate flying through, here comes a scooter. Is there gonna be reverse polarity? No, he's getting silenced. Cold on coming down, there's a fiend's up on the stock. He pops his BKB though, can try to do what he can. 
Voda goes down. Prepare for Bello go down. Double kill for Massacre is on the way out of this fight. We still have Die here, but he is do dropped once again. Enchanter still picks up the puck. And that's going to be five heroes down across the board. Lone Druid also TP'd in here to try and help out. And that was a four on five fight because Hakon, he is just walking across the map placing words. And that was just five heroes going down. And. They did use a reverse player, that was for the lone druid, but Massacre coming in from the side with his BKB also there. It was just it was just too much. This BKB actually not even used. The BKB was up on stock. That's it. Fiend's grip getting interrupted. Scoor helping out for that one, I believe. But that's a great fight for Elf Pride. I was actually it looked a bit like a messy fight, and if you're gonna fight your opponent under your opponent's tower, then you, you have to have a good plan. You have to be able to know that, that you can take this. And they did. I feel like it may be more of Foda's misplay than anything else. I mean, yeah. Didn't all come together. And then still having a fight 4 on 5 where the first people with 4 actually win. I mean, a Poison Nova, the, an ability that normally would help out a team fight like that massively. It wasn't even there. Wasn't even there. Basher now up on the bear. He's continuing to farm. I mean, it was a good fight for El Pride, yes. But it was still one fight. They managed to get towers for that, yes, that's nice. But in the meantime, the, the kill score, I mean, it's only it's it's only three kills difference, which is basically nothing. The gold graph did drop quite a bit for that experience graph. We're going to see the same thing. But this fight is far from over yet. I mean, we have on one side, it's a farming gyrocopter who's almost got his BKB and a farming lone druid. Who is doing pretty well for his bear also. And on the on the other side you have got Luna who's got a BKB. You've got yourself a Queen of Pain as a semi carry. And then you gotta rely the rest on your semi carry on your supports to try and do good things. So you have got yourself the reverse polarity. That's some team fight on El Pride that is that's not got an equivalent on Foda. So that's gonna be their go to you know, unique selling point, if you will. The one thing that they wanna use and put to good use. You got an Enchantress going for a semi-carry semi build as well. It's gonna be Lone Druid, it's gonna be ganked here by the looks of it. They know, they might know that he's there. He's gonna get sandwiched. Massacre is gonna claim first. And I don't think there's any way out for him now. And the. Uh, ooh, the neutrals now. There's just two little baby dragons. Oh, look, he's got his. They look. It looks a bit awkward. I thought they looked different. He looks a bit like uh, Looney. Like he's not really all there. Oh well. But a nice, uh, nice kill, anyways. Yeah, he's not. He wasn't gonna get the knight by that. That was my point before I saw the avatar of that dragon and got slightly distracted. Happens sometimes, you know. Happens. Tier two tower, L pride. That whole team fight thing that I was talking about. It's uh, it's working out for them. They are saying, you know what? We have got this with team fight, and we're gonna just five man dota you. So either you have got something good to come up with to uh, to stop us from doing that, like pushing into our base, so we have to defend. That's nice. Or uh, we're gonna take your towers and in the end we're gonna take your base. So this is around the time when Foda, they should have been ready as well. Ooh, Skur, gonna pick up, die, die. Gonna get a Lucent Beam, Shockwave, gonna get healed up by the mechanism. But is it gonna be enough? Looks like it is. Impetus, wow! That's a long range Impetus and that's gonna be Android dominating. And that is the Aghanim Scepter working out for him. So I was just saying how much, uh, how much uh, or how important it would be for the the supports to be the, their potential to be semi carriers later on the game goes, and that enchantress is definitely one that is you should watch out for because that's that's painful. So is it gonna be Foda that's already ready to fight as well? I mean, they don't really have like I said, they don't really have a reverse polarity kind of spell, so they have to wait until L Pride kind of makes a mistake with that and know that it's and they know that it's down. And then take a fight because with it, I'm not sure they can fight it unless they're like really, really cautious about their positioning. And we have seen them doing that before. We've definitely seen them doing that before. We have seen some uh, some really sad reverse polarities coming out from from Lolek, but the fact that there is a reverse polarity and the fact that Foda has to be careful about their positioning also makes them. A bit more careful about going into a fight regardless because you don't want to get caught out with that reverse player to just you know you just just don't uh, I have to just point out by the way that L pride they have got a gem of course up on Hakon which we already saw 
And uh, they are going to make sure that there is not going to be a single spot of vision on the map for uh, for Foda. And, and uh, this is one right now, just got placed, so that's something, yay. We'll be counting toward it soon, probably. Uh, when uh, when El Pride decides to go, but they have got every single lane warded. There is no leaving your base without El Pride knowing it. Roshan will be up again shortly, El Pride knows that, so they're gonna be taking that Aegis and maybe then going to the base of Foda. Yeah. Ghost after pick up the by picked up by the Magnus. That's nice. A ghost after also up by the Enchantress as well as a uh, as a cloak. A nice combination there. I mean it's gonna take extra magic damage if you're gonna have your ghost scepter on there, so if you do if you do at least make sure you're gonna take a bit less damage and spell resistance being there. Mount stop picked up by the Luna. She just cleared out the ancient stack, so it's gonna get be indeed uh, fairly rich there. And there is Roshan again. They realize he's there, so he will be there. Boom. And there's gonna be nothing Foda can do to stop this from happening. Now with the reverse player too over there. I mean, we all know that fights at Roshan are very, very clutch. Ooh, they're gonna try. That would be interesting to see, because because I was gonna say like reverse polarities work well if you're with clutch play. Nice link is up a massacre. There goes uh, there goes Tails ready with the silence up. Their fiends grip cold on coming down, but like I said, reverse polarity three down already. It's gonna be four soon. Prepare for dead for battle. Prepare to die, and that's gonna be the last one alive. Puck who just dropped there as well. Triple kill for Lolek, double kill for Sog, and that was. Like, exactly the reason why I just said that you don't want to go in when there's a reverse polarity there. I mean, really? Really? Listen to me, Foda, listen to me. Great reverse polarity, though. Look like uh, getting that one spot on. Having enough heroes in there, everybody dying. <clears throat> and they're gonna be able to get a tier 3 out of this, unless they're gonna be able to force out some extra buybacks. I mean, Lone Druid has got a buyback, but that's the only one on the Radiant side that actually does. So they're gonna have uh, 25 seconds without uh, the the puck, and basically every single hero that's still dead right now is gonna be the uh, the carries. We still have luminates flying through though, so that's nice. Uh, but soon again, that's not gonna be the case because that was died, just died. You know that that just happened because that was the blink dagger and the score. Bane puts himself up in a nightmare. Is gonna be dropping here probably too. If he yeah, there he goes. Queen of Pain picking up the kill. Call down coming down. Sock actually has to be careful, but he has the Aegis, so he's gonna be fine. Goes after activated on Android so he can walk through towers like he doesn't care. Which he probably doesn't, he has got his nature's attendants back up in 24 seconds. And of course the mechanism also up for Magnus soon again as the tower will go down. Will it continue going for this? It looks like they are. This might be a bit too risky with Lone Druid. Again, and look at the HP. El Pride, very low on life on their entire team. And prepare for battle though, that's gonna be Android still with the HP there. Oh, BKB turn on stock, you better run, you better hide, and he does. Two, well, entire sets are back down though. The Lone Druid coming too late. Doesn't have a bear. That's gonna be his issue. And that's the reason why we didn't see him earlier. I mean, if you have all your items up on a bear and your bear's dead, you're nothing basically. Well, you're you're a level 15 creep. Yay! Now you have the bear. Happy times. And let's see what they're gonna be trying to do now. Knowing that El Pride has got everything uh, low. The, I was gonna say everything on, off cooldown, but that's not the case. Because Lolik already has the reverse polarity back again. And he's gonna go for a refresher, by the way. <clears throat> so we'll have that one uh, up shortly. Because he is doing uh, pretty well on fun. As we have got him... where the, oh, That's the one I wanted to say. We have got him on, um, on 390 gold per minute. It's still uh, still highest than everybody on the Radiant team, which is pretty ins insane. And also, of course, one reason for that is that there's still two towers standing left, or left standing up on uh, up on El Pride side. So, you know, those towers do, do make a difference up on gold per minute. But then still, almost everybody of El Pride is is higher than almost everybody of Foda. Apart, uh, okay, apart from Hakon, Hakon who's again Gale the Bear to try and get away. He's being chased down by quite a bit of heroes actually. He's gonna be in trouble. Where's his team? Team. Team Bashers and Tangles, no. Team Gem of True Sight is here. Venom and Salty going down. Hello, hello, Lolik. And the bear destroys the gem. TP's out from Lone Druid, but the TP's getting cancelled. Lolik, one dead, two dead. And he actually got one kill stole by the creep. That's a bit of a shame, otherwise he would have had a double kill. And that's worth dying for for, for Venom and apart from losing the gem. But at this age. They already got Foda being a, a bit afraid to leave their base. I mean, yeah, the vision that you get from it is nice, but 
you know, the gem served its purpose, I would say. It's still nice to have, but it's not a must anymore. Not with the state of the game this game is at right now. We do have almost 20k gold in favor of El Pride, with the experience graph going the way of El Pride, of course, as well, with over, over, over 20k. But they're not gonna go push on the top lane, even though Lone Druid is dead. Oh, look at that. Would you look at that? I didn't even notice just yet, but Massacre hasn't died yet a single time. And that is in a game when there is a Fiend's Grip. And the Fiend's Grip is something... I mean, we've seen it in previous game, I believe either yesterday or the day before, where Queen of Pain was having such a tough time that every time that Fiend's Grip came up again... Or was it a life stealer? Oh well, same story there too. I mean, F Queen of Pain, she can't blink away, of course. Fiend's Grip is great against her, but she hasn't died yet. At all. Uh, she's got herself a Daedalus right now, so this is definitely a semi-carry Queen of Pain, or carry Queen of Pain, I should call it, not semi anymore. With a Butterfly now also up on stock, so he is looking pretty decent enough. Recipe for the, um, for the refresher is already there, so just needs the Perseverance. And everybody else uh, looking good. Let's see how, what Foda is having. They have got the Sheepstick, of course. Is it going to be enough? BKB ready, with the Yasha being built up by uh, Prepare for Battle as well. For a staff a mechanism up on um, die. Illusion. Ooh, where are you? There you are. And bracer build. Bracer build for the bane. And normally around 36 minutes. You wanna have been in so many fights already with a bane that you have yourself something like a BKB or you know or a four staff. Four staff probably even better than a BKB at this stage, like I said already earlier on, that the BKB is still gonna be uh, you're still gonna get hit for the reverse polarity, but nothing with at that. Towers, as long as there's no heroes around, might as well just go on the tower. Home missile coming in, blinding light going through. Sonic wave, oh, that's already died. Mechanism being used, Eclipse coming through. It's Bane that drops first. Prepare for battle, battle doing what he can. Already put up his uh, BKB, but the, the right click damage is just too much. Puck goes down by the Enchantress as Lone Druid picks up a tower still on the top lane, who is not even in this fight. But his own base is gonna be having it. His own base is gonna be lo losing one set of racks. Maybe two. Maybe even they go for tier 4 towers. GG well played, gets cold. That's it, Mask of Man is up on Android. GG well played, gets cold. And El Pride gets himself three extra points in Star Letter. Season 5, Day 6, Star Series. And that's gonna be, uh, that's gonna be Foda not getting any points right now. I do have, I did have. Damn it! I would have had score points for you, scoreboard. I made one. I've got to get to show it to you during the draft. Oh wait, you know what? I'm gonna show it to you in the next game. That's when you stick around, because we have got ourselves another game. It's gonna be TCM taking on Virtus Pro, and we're gonna see a best out of one for those. Also for Star Ladder, for Star Series, and um, stick around for that if you want to see that. My name is Shiver. If you wanna support me, we should do. There you go. We do. Uh, you go to youtube.com slash gaming and you subscribe or you subscribe on Twitch or you follow on Twitch or you follow on Twitter or you like on Facebook and it's all under the same name of Shiver Gaming. Anyway, stick around. We have got ourselves another game coming up. Like I said, TCM, taking on Virtus Pro. Don't go anywhere. <laughs>